Now let us continue solving this problem. But ngayon naman, let's solve the deflection at point C. So for the deflection at point C, the value of x sub 1 would be equal to 7 meters. Ito. Seven meters. So, uh, notice that this is just the same sa first problem natin, wherein this value of x sub 1 is greater than a considering the distributed load. So, we have to apply integration pa rin. So, we can copy this one. So, sir, ano yung magbabago? Yung limits dyan, hindi yan magbabago. Same pa rin from 0 up to 4 meters. But itong 4.5, ito yung magbabago. Kasi di ba, since hindi natin na meet yung condition that x sub 1 is lesser than or equal to a, meaning we have to mirror the beam, so ito na yung magiging uh, x sub 1 instead of this one. So, retain na lang natin, 7 meters pa rin yan. Ayan, so the value of x sub 1 would be equal to 10 meters minus 7 meters, which is 3 meters. So, multiplied by 3. Tapos, ito rin. Ayan. So, the rest of the solutions would still remain the same. Ito lang yung magbabago. Ayan. Same, same condition lang. So, input na lang natin sa calculator. Ayan. So, this is the deflection caused by the distributed load alone. Equals 99.6. Ayan. Now, for the concentrated load, 50 kilonewtons, we still have to apply this formula. Ayan. Now, take note that in this problem, for the concentrated load alone, since this is exactly at the point where we want to take the deflection, dyan sa point C then it would mean that the value of A is equal to x sub 1 so ito yung kukuna natin ng deflection again measured from the left ulit since we have to check if we meet the condition but again it's obvious naman na this is equal to A the distance from the left support going to the concentrated load so A is equal to x pasok pa rin sa condition x sub 1 is lesser than or equal to A. So, for the concentrated load alone, yung magbabago lang is x sub 1. Instead of 5.5, this will become 7 meters. Tapos, ito rin. 7 meters. So, pakicheck na lang yung previous na discussion natin since doon ko mas in-explain uh, kung paano gagamitin yung formulas. So, 50 times 3 times 7 over 6 times 10 multiplied by 10 squared minus 3 squared minus 7 squared. Ayan. Equals, we have 735. So, adding both, ito yung deflection due to the distributed load. Tapos, ito naman, deflection due to the concentrated load. Ayan. So, adding both, 735 plus 99.6, we would get 834.6. This is Kn m cubed divided by Ei. So, this is our final answer. Ayan. Now, how about for the remaining questions? Ayan. Determine the slope at D. Tagalin ko na lang yan. Determine the slope at D and also the deflection at point E. Ayan. Paano natin yan isosolve? Now, for the slope at D, we can use the following formula. Uh, for the slope at A, the left support, ito yung formula. Then, ito naman yung formula if slope at B. So, we would use this one. So, by superposition method, we have to split the loadings. But, pwede rin na uh, itong buong beam na lang, then isa-isa na lang natin yung effects nila. Para mas madali. 
Ayan. So, for the slope at B, for the distributed load, we have to apply integration pa rin. So, this differential element, same as above, this is dx, tapos yung concentrated load niya would be equal to 3dx. Ayan. Now, integrate from 0 up to 4 meters pa rin. 0 to 4. Ayan. Now, take note na you don't have to mirror the beam when solving for uh, the value of the slope. Always measured from the left yung A, then yung B naman is measured from the right support. So, this is our value of A, which is equal to the value of X, yung, uh, yung variable na i-integrate natin. So, X. Tapos, ito naman yung B. Ayan. So, we have P times A times B divided by 6L EI multiplied by 2L minus B. Ayan. Now, we have to describe all of the variables in terms of X. So, try to notice here that the value of A is just equal to X, the distance from the left going to the differential element. However, to describe B in terms of X, we must subtract X from this total distance. So, di ba yung total distance yan is uh, 10 meters. So, 10 meters, bawasan natin ng x, yan yung value ng b. So, b equals 10 minus x. Therefore, uh, integrate from 0 to 4. This is for the slope at b. Ayan. But this is just caused by the distributed load. Ayan. So, we would have the force is equal to 3dx. But again, yung dx, nasa dulo yan ng calculator by default. The value of A is equal to x. So, times x, then B naman is equal to 10 minus x. Ayan. Then, 6L over EI, I mean, 6L times EI, L is equal to 10 meters, then multiplied by EI, tapos meron pang 2L minus B. So, 2 times 10, then multiplied by 10 minus x. Ayan, color na lang natin yung values ng b. Ayan, so ito rin yung a. So, input natin sa calculators, ilabas mo na lang yung ei since constant lang naman. So, we would have integral from 0 to 4, then 3x multiplied by uh, 10 minus x then 6 times 10 multiplied by 2L 2 times 10 ah, wait lang, na multiply ko yung dalawa kailangan minus 2L minus B, ayan 10 minus x Ingat lang sa parenthesis. So, press equals, we would have 36.8. So, uh, since slope yung kinocompute natin, this is kn m squared divided by uh, ei, which is constant. Then, finally, for the concentrated load, the deflection, uh, I mean, the slope at b due to the concentrated load, we would still apply this formula. But madali na lang since this is a concentrated load. No need to integrate. So, the value of P is equal to 50. Ayan. Then, ano yung A? Yung A, yan yung distance from the left going to the concentrated load. So, from the left up to C, point C, we have a distance of 7 meters. This is A para sa concentrated load. So, yung value ng B naman is equal to 3 meters. Ayan. So, 50 times 7 multiplied by 3 then divided by 6L, so 6 times 10 EI multiplied by 2L, 2 times 10 minus B. So, B is equal to 
Ayan. So, plug mo na lang yung values. We would get 297.5. K and M squared then divided by EI. So, add mo yung dalawang slope. By the way, yung direction ng slope dyan is counterclockwise. Assuming downward loads kasi. Ayan. Di ba dito? Uh, ditong banda sa point B, yung direction ng slope would be counterclockwise. Ayan. Tapos, pag dito naman sa A, it would assume a direction of clockwise. So, 297.5 plus 36.8, we would get 334.3. So, KN M squared divided by EI. Ayan. So, kapag upward yung force mo, then iba naman yung sign dyan. Magiging negative. Just to indicate uh, clockwise rotation kapag upward yung force. So, ito na yung slope, uh, total slope at B. Ayan. So, from this information, how can we obtain the deflection at E? We can obtain the deflection at E by drawing the tangent line. So, di ba? Yung elastic curve ng beam natin is paganto. Ayan. If we are only considering the simply supported part. But since meron tayong overhang dyan, whatever the slope here is, same slope yan all throughout dito sa D to E. So we can draw a straight line. Ayan. Bale, ito yung magiging deflection at point E. Ayan. So, sir, ano yung slope niyan? What is the value of this angle? Ayan, ito yung essential question dyan. Now, since yung overhang, walang loading dyan, then parang ano lang siya, para siyang cantilever, then the value of the slope at D would also be equal to this one. So, if we extend this horizontal line, and we draw a line tangent to point D. Ayan. Same yung slope ng line na to with this particular line. So, this is the slope uh, slope at D. Which is, nakuha na natin yan kanina. Now, we know that slope is equal to rise over run. Rise over run. Ayan. So, if we know the slope and we know the horizontal distance, then we can obtain the deflection at E. So, the slope uh, slope at D is equal to 334.3. So, slope at D, 334.3. So, we would have 334.3 equals rise over run. So, deflection at E divided by the horizontal distance. Again, rise over run. Rise would be the vertical distance. Then, ito naman yung run. Parang ito lang yung triangle na yan. And itong naka-purple. So, deflection at E, then 2.4 meters. Tapos, ito yung angle. Ayan. So, divided by 2.4, therefore, the deflection at E would be equal to 334.3 times 2.4, which is 802.32. So, yung unit nyan is KN, KN M cubed because we will multiply 2.4 dyan, KN M squared times meter magiging KN M, uh, KN M cubed. Then, divided by EI. So, this is our deflection at E. So, yung ginamit natin was the slope at D to obtain this deflection. Now, in another video, Diniscuss ko rin kung paano yung uh, approach kapag merong load dito sa overhang. Ayan. Uh, we already covered this one. So, itong deflection at E pala, since ito yung tangent line at D, it will just extend 
indefinitely. Meaning, this deflection is actually upward. Ayan. So, from this horizontal line, the deflection is above point E. So, indicate the direction. So, i-check natin yung answers natin using our application. Ayan. Uh, balikan natin yung first question. Determine the deflection at 5.5 from the left support. Now, our answer was 964.4625. Ayan. Uh, 5.5. So, tama lang. Then, we also solved at exactly 7 meters. 834.6. Ayan. Uh, tama rin. By the way, yung direction yan is downward pa rin. Then, for the slope naman, we have 334.3 km squared uh, over EI. So, ito yan. Uh, 0.3343. Now, uh, just multiply this by a factor of 1000 squared. Tama ba? Uh, wait lang. 0.3343 times 1000 squared. Ah, wait lang. 1000 lang pala. Mm, ayan. 334.3. Now, the reason for that is uh, dito kasi sa conversion, hindi kasi essentially ginawa nating constant yung EI. May, may binigay kasi tayong values. 100 GPA saka 10 million for I. Para sa deflection yan. So, tama rin yung slope. Then, for the deflection, we have 802.32 upward dito sa point E. Uh, ito yan, 802.32. So, makikita mo sa elastic curve that it rises sa point na to. So, also try to notice na doon sa overhang, same lang yung slope all throughout. Notice na uh, this is 10 meters, 3343, then if you will move this vertical line, constant yan siya. Ayan. 3343. So, again, yung reason dyan is wala kasing load doon sa overhanging portion. So, constant slope lang all throughout. Anyway, yan naman din yung mangyayari if we apply superposition, if we isolate the loads. Ayan. So, no changes in the slope. Kaya straight line lang. Constant lang siya. So, also try using this method sa previous examples nyo.